Katrina Bowles. We did a video about inner healing, so check that video out. Katrina is going around teaching people, doing trainings, teaching leaders, and teaching people who want to have Christian inner healing, mm -hmm. emotional healing. And in this video, we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to look at a few of your books, mm -hmm. and then we're going to break down the differences between counseling, inner healing, and deliverance, because there are some questions about that. Some of the people that come in, mm -hmm. they're not sure what the what the variations of those are, the differentiation. So we want to look at that. I want to show you Katrina Bowles' books, The Rejection Wound, His Beauty, My Ashes, Times and Seasons. This is a memoir. And Lodabar, Processing the Dry Places. And would you... Tell people a little bit about these books. Sure. And where they can get them. Yes. So all these books are on Amazon. And if you're at the well, we have them in the bookstore. And if I go places uh, to speak, I bring them with me. Yeah. So I usually have them on me. So His Beauty, My Ashes, Times and Seasons is a memoir. It's about my life. It's the journey that I've been on with the Lord. Uh, crash course in and the supernatural deliverance and all those things before God brought it all together and put me in ministry for it. Lots of good stories about God's supernatural power yes. and, and yes. personal stories and yes. people's stories. Yes. Uh, the reject. Well, I guess I can do this one. So this is like kind of like a part two or an, or an intermission. I think I'm going to write another book. But Lodabar is about going through that wilderness, the wilderness place of being processed. So I go over the patriarchs and the promises and how the promises given weren't immediate. They were for an extended period of time, but it didn't just include the person that the promises were given to, but all of Israel. So it affected a whole nation. And the dry places, is that painful times before there's big <laughs> breakthroughs? Yeah, I a think lot of times? Uh, John the Cross called it dark night of the yeah. soul. So yes, um, extremely painful because it's the processing. And you know, here right now we're doing the fire and liberty. And it's the whole thing of burning off yeah. what's what shouldn't be there. It's that refinement the Lord takes us through before he commissions us. So in counseling, sometimes I give the example of women having childbirth. They have <laughs> yeah. all this pain, and then they yeah. have a beautiful baby. Yeah. And they forget the pain. Is, is that the birth pains? Is that kind of like the dry places in this, or is it very different? It can very well be okay. like that, depending yeah. on the person. Yeah, okay. for sure. For sure. And uh, lastly is the rejection wound. This goes into um, an analogy between Saul and David, how when King Saul was rejected, how he turned and turned into jealousy, opened the door to murder, really shows how you can open a door to the demonic, um, where through wounding, rejection, things like that, where David took rejection, he processed it correctly with the Lord, he sought out the Lord, and he lived correctly before him, so he didn't have the same type of open doors that Saul had. So they both dealt with the same thing, but they lived totally different lives. Okay. So it, it goes into yeah. a teaching about that, but also some um, about getting f the back part of it is about getting free and mm -hmm. staying free as well. So David wa would often humble himself mm -hmm. and take responsibility for his healing and yeah. go to God. Yeah. And Saul was a prideful man and went down, down, Disobedient. down. Disobedient. Yeah. He didn't listen. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned um, demons. Isn't that just kind of symbolic biblical stuff? Oh, we laugh because we, we we do this all the time. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, and it's funny because I wasn't churched. I think that's the funny part. Like when people come with me, come at me with that type of stuff, I'm like, I wasn't churched. So I wasn't, it's not like I was taught these things. I would read my Bible and go, How, and, I, and I love the church. I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't want this to come out the wrong way. I love the church, but I would read the Bible and go, how come I'm not seeing this? Mm. And the first time I actually did ever see seeing the casting out of demons, yeah. seeing the miraculous. I was just curious, like, why Why are we not seeing the elders lay hands and pray for people? I just didn't understand why. And it wasn't like a bashing or a judgment. I just didn't understand the disconnect. So my encounters were actually outside of the church when I was younger with mm -hmm. the Lord. So that's what opened me up to the supernatural. It wasn't taught to me. Deliverance, actually, I, I, was, I went to visit a church. I got, my friend was like, oh, you want to come? Visiting a church. This guy was in deliverance. I didn't know him. I watched it. And then I sat there and they were like, hey, you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I didn't even know what that was. I was like, sure, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I'm speaking in tongues. And I'm like, what is even happening here? <laughs> so it's kind of like when I say, like the memoir, crash coursing. That's what it was for me. I felt like I was a homeschooled kid. So it's not like I was brought up and I know people probably think, oh, you know, Christians that do this are brought up in a cult and they're, they're brainwashed. No, I was, 
I would, I would go, I'd be walking down the street and people would be like manifesting, turn to me, I'll just kill myself then. I'm like, what? Or I was, you know, one time sitting with my uncle, I watched his eyes, I watched something black go across his eyes while he was talking to me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I should have killed you like I tried to when, I, when you were younger. And then he starts oh. laughing. So I would see these things, but go, yeah. I don't know what to do. How do I help these mm -hmm. people? People in the church weren't teaching us what no. that was. They didn't no. know. They didn't, they didn't know. know. Yeah. Yes, they didn't know. So my first interaction was meeting a deliverance minister in my 20s, and then I watched him do it, and I actually went through my first deliverance, and I mean, when I'm telling you, I didn't even know, I would, you couldn't have told me I had anything, mm -hmm. because it was contrary to what I was taught, you know, like, no, like, I wouldn't have had one of a Christian, wouldn't be there. Now, I went up to get prayer, and his wife was praying for me, and I had an open door to witchcraft because of my father. So that, and generationally, it was a pretty strong witchcraft opening. And I had dabbled in certain things because of it as well. So I had my own responsibility to the open door of his actions and other people in my family. So when I went up there for prayer, and she knew, but I went up there to get prayed for, I, the only thing I could say was, I feel, an, I feel a spiritual block. Mm -hmm. Because I just came back to the Lord. I, my, my hard heart got tenderized. But something had occurred where I couldn't, didn't have the same sensitivities I had as a child. I don't know if it was years of rebellion, whatever. Have them pray for me. Mark, I flew forward as if somebody, I know it was probably something coming out, mm -hmm. but it felt like somebody pushed me from behind. That was the yeah. velocity to which I flew mm -hmm. forward. And they grabbed their hands and they held me in place. That was my very first interaction with like me. Yeah. So, I, yeah. So you had a spiritual block that was kind of like a wall preventing you from total yes. intimacy that you desired yes. between you and God? Yep. And then did you have intrusive thoughts that bothered you that, that were not yours? Did you have self-condemning thoughts? Did you have violent thoughts or sexual thoughts? Or did you have uh, thoughts that you didn't want? I, so, yes. I had a lot of thoughts, like suicidal thoughts, self-harm. I had a lot of anger, um, violence. A lot of things that I grew up, I grew up in a lot of trauma. So I had a lot of you know, those type of things. Um, but I, I can't, I, I don't want, I want to say this to be fair. Yeah. It didn't break in an instance. Mm -hmm. My healings, I've been through deliverance and emotional healing multiple times. Yeah. It has been, my healing's been progressive. Sanctification process. Yes, yes. the ongoing mm -hmm. sanctification. I'm getting freer and freer. My mind's getting more renewed, more renewed, going from glory to glory. Yeah. So oftentimes when we lead through people through deliverance, they will have certain aspects that are really bothering them, like yes. constant self-condemning thoughts are yeah. just gone. Yes. Or you and I have talked about how we love to mm -hmm. see people who just, they leave and they think, I've never had quiet in my mind. Yes. You know, they, they can hear the cars or they can hear themselves chew for the first yes. time. They can... And so that's a beautiful thing yeah. that, that people experience. I uh, love but you're saying also at the same time, even though powerful things happen like that, it can often be a process for some people. It can be a process. And I always tell people, don't be discouraged. Like God always does something amazing. Like whenever, and we'll, I know we'll get into inner healing, but I do inner healing and deliverance, emotional healing and deliverance. I go both ways, but I always tell them God can do anything in an instant. Yeah. We don't limit God. But don't be discouraged if there is a process for you, especially, and it's only because I come from an extensive trauma background yeah. and it's been progressive for me. Don't be discouraged if you have a long history and you're, yours is more progressive than the person that didn't have the same type of history. Right. Don't compare. Yeah. God's going to get you there. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep moving forward with him in it. Yeah. Yeah. And so who else would you say needs to go through deliverance or should consider it? We've talked a little bit about intrusive thoughts yeah. and just being blocked spiritually from intimacy with God. Yeah. So deliverance is a children's bread, according to what Jesus said, the Seraphonician woman. Like it's it's the children's bread. Like that that passage speaks to that, it being the children's bread, I should say, paraphrase. And that means Christians. Yes, Christians, yeah. because we have to have Holy Spirit God's children. to fill us, to keep us, right? That's what that's what keeps us filled. That's what keeps us protected. That's what keeps us fortified. And we don't want to do deliverance with people who haven't accepted no, Jesus and the Holy Spirit fills them. Should not. Because they will should not. have problems. Yes, because you need Holy Spirit to fill up those places. Yes. So we dealt with, okay, intrusive thoughts. I would say um, behavioral issues. Now, we talked about this before where thoughts become feelings, 
feelings become actions. So if somebody's noticing behaviors, they might not necessarily be tuned into the thoughts behind. So they could not necessarily be having intrusive thoughts, but have ungodly thought patterns. There's strongholds that we talked about. Impulsive or con compuls yes. compulsive uh, behaviors. Can be those things yeah. as well. Um, that are uh, different than what their beliefs are and what yes, their wants and desires are. That are driving certain things and they're going, okay, I don't want to do this. I go home and I break things when I'm mad. I don't want to do that. Why can't I stop? And that can be a demon. That can very well be a and demon. We see, people, we see people get free from that yes. daily. I want to tell you, this week alone, I, the word of knowledge that I feel like has been huge has been rejection. Mm -hmm. And I have done deliverance on multiple people this week where the word of knowledge is rejection. And it has been a tangible mm -hmm. healing for them. Yeah. Rejection can be a wound. But when you have a wound that festers, it can attract the demonic. And then you can end up with, with a spirit of rejection two separate things. You've got to deal with both. I'm glad you said that because rejection, mm -hmm. forgiveness, yeah. and secrecy, yes. I think those three things, and maybe there's more that I'm not yeah. thinking of, but those three things, if you have rejection mm -hmm. wounds, you have unforgiveness, yes. that you just wish you didn't have and can't Huge. break through, mm -hmm. or you have secrecy, there's a chance the enemy is attached to you in some way and is influencing you. And we're not talking about possession no. because that denotes Yes. Ownership. Yep. And Christians are not owned by no. any demons. No. But they're certainly influenced by them. Yes. And because they can get freedom. Yes. The, the analogy that the Bible gives uh, was about you you are given over to the tormentors yeah. for unforgiveness. The tormentors, that's the demonic. That's the demonic spirits. They're the tormentors. Unforgiveness attaches you to that. It was the door to the bitterness, the yeah. hatred, and it's it's not good. So people can go to our other video about inner healing. Yes. But what is a brief description of inner healing and how it varies from deliverance and how it varies from counseling in your mind? Okay, so inner healing, also um, known as emotional healing, mm -hmm. it's dealing with the emotions of a person. It's dealing with heart wounds and it's dealing with ungodly strongholds of the mind, meaning anything that's contrary to the truth of the word that you believe is an ungodly stronghold where it's, it, it, it's something that's solidified in your mind. Um, we deal with that. We deal with the basics of discipleship, helping a person get the biblical basic foundation in who they are as far as cultivating um, a relationship with the Lord, making sure they're, they're good this way, even if there's been an effect relationally this way, it's affecting this way. We got to straighten this out. We got to make sure they're hearing. We got to make sure that they're, they're gleaning their identity from the truth of who they are in, in the Lord. And being able to walk in their inheritance, the things that the Lord says that we are able to walk in now. It's not like we're, you know, we're waiting for everything for when we pass over and, and we die, go to heaven, and then we can get everything. No, we are seated with Jesus in heavenly places. We have access to the things of our inheritance now. They are empowered. That's the whole thing of the Holy Spirit, being empowered. So, and it's also forgiveness. We see that hugely in deliverance, but it also is something we hit on in the emotional healing. Make sure people have a lifestyle of forgiveness yeah. so basically it's teaching people the basic fundamentals of Christianity mm -hmm. and getting them into the place it the Lord told me it's sanctification it's ongoing sanctification yes. that's what I'm doing and one thing you and I have talked about and I love how you do it you bring them into God's presence you teach yes. them how to come into God's presence and yes. when Jesus comes yeah. into the room the Holy Spirit fills them yeah healing happens yeah and that's my favorite part of yeah. how you've described inner healing. Is. And I, I guess to your point, that's what makes it different than counseling because I'm not the one teaching them skills yes. or teaching yes. them relationship yes. healing. Or... I might give them tools, yeah. but I'm a facilitator between them and the Lord. I, first thing I want to know is how you hear. How do you hear from the Lord? If you don't know, we're going to help you figure that out. Yeah. And then we're going to have the Lord. Holy Spirit comes in and because I'm not... None of us. We're not creating people to be codependent upon no. us. They have to be codependent upon the Lord yeah. alone. We can help. So it is exactly what you said. It's facilitating their encounter with the Lord and letting him do the healing because we are not the healers. He is. Yes. Yeah. And even though you came out of a medical profession, mm -hmm. you believe that God can heal people. Oh, yeah. No doubt. <laughs> I've seen it uh, multiple yes. times. Yeah. yeah. And the main reason I came out of a profession in a licensed professional counseling as a clinician was because I kept seeing God heal people. Yes. And so I stepped into pastoral counseling. Yeah. And so in my mind, the difference between pastoral counseling, which mm -hmm. is what I'm doing, and clinical counseling, which is what I used to do, I dropped my license 
because I saw God healing through coming into his presence yeah. and whether whatever the symptoms were, you know, we brought them into God's presence and, and yeah. we didn't say you have to stop your medication. No, we didn't say no. stop going to your doctor. Never. But we did say come into God's presence. Yes. We do say come into God's presence and we do say there may be a spiritual aspect to that. Yes. Even beyond spiritual warfare, there may be things attached to me because yeah. even if I'm motivated and I'm, I'm a strong Christian leading people yes. to Jesus mm -hmm. and they have areas of my life that the enemy is strongly attached and influencing yep. me not possessing me but influencing yeah. me absolutely and I can get freedom for that through deliverance yes. and the state was not too keen on casting demons out of people <laughs> to get yeah. rid of some Are of the symptoms sure? but I just kept seeing people get breakthroughs and so yeah. now I work with people in counseling and whether it's teaching them how to work through um, trauma in relationships yeah and communication or whether it's setting goals and working towards them or just needing a support and a yeah. you know um, a listening ear yeah an objective perspective it's not biased like their friends are going to be exactly um, so there's a lot of different reasons to come in for counseling mm -hmm. and then inner healing you talked about in the other video how that's that's more, um, I don't know if intense is the word, but it's maybe one, two, three sessions where yes. we're focusing on that breakthrough yes. that God's going to bring yes. them. Because you should then have the tools to facilitate it um, on your own. We talked about in the other video, not only do you have the paperwork, um, different things that we help to reposition you, homework, things like that before you come, even come into the session or at the session, afterward, you get an aftercare plan. Yeah. So it's scriptures to stand on. It's reiterating intimacy, identity, inheritance, a lifestyle of forgiveness. It's teaching a person how to leave and keep their mind fortified, how to stay full of the Holy Spirit. They're given these tools. They're given resources. It's to have ownership as far as, okay, what scriptures am I standing on? What does my aftercare plan look like to stay free? It's not that they can't come back. They can. But I always tell them, you want an extended period of time in between sessions if you do want to come back because you need to be cultivating with the Lord the things you were just taught. Because, again, we're teaching people to be codependent upon him mm. and to help. But we're here if they need us. Yes. Yeah. So I know that even in the inner healing you do, there are a lot of counseling aspects to Absolutely. it. There are even deliverance, as deliverance Absolutely. aspects to it. And then when I do counseling, there are inner healing yes. aspects and deliverance yeah. aspects. Because sometimes when people forgive people mm -hmm. that they have never, they wanted to, but they haven't known how. Yeah. I've had people say, I just felt something physically leave me. Yes, you know? yes. And a lot of times it's more of an emotional, just, this is, I feel so good. Yes. You know, there's a breakthrough emotionally, but sometimes people feel physical yes. weight lifted and, yes. and release. Yes. And so all these things, counseling, inner yeah. healing, deliverance, they overlap. They do. But hopefully, if you have any more questions, you'll come mm -hmm. and see us at the Well of Maryville, yeah. and we can clarify any more mm -hmm. questions you have. Thewellofmaryville.com or you can find us at The Well of Maryville on Facebook. Look us up, come and see us. If you need counseling, if you need mm -hmm. inner healing, if you need deliverance from literal demons that are influencing you and your bloodline, your generations, you can be a curse breaker, not just yes. for you, but for your future mm -hmm. generations. That's good. Uh, my, I have a, a wonderful woman that um, has told me I can tell about her deliverance experience. She went through deliverance, didn't have any demons attached to her at the end, but she said, Mark, the next... Two days after deliver deliverance, after yeah. I did all the curse breaking, um, my adult child called me and said, we haven't talked for several years, Mom. I just want to get reconciled with you. Oh my she said, gosh. Mark, I didn't even tell her I went through the, the, the deliverance. Oh, that's so beautiful. The next day, she said, Mark, my other adult child called me and said, I was hurt as a child. I want to break the secrecy of that. And I want to... Um, you to be part of that. She said, there's no way that that was just a coincidence that two days after so cool. going through these curse breaking, yeah. and I'm not talking about curses from God, I'm talking about assignments from the from enemy. From the enemy, it's not yeah. God. Yeah, she yeah. said, my whole family's different. <laughs> See, and that's why we love doing what we do. We love healing because yes. that is what Jesus did for us. Yes. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm sick and tired of sitting in a pew yes. and not Can't having the power of Can't Jesus do, do healing. Yes. I mean, I've sang about it, I've preached about it, yeah, and I've learned a lot about it, and now we are seeing it happen. Yeah, we're seeing healing and breakthrough. So good, and it's so wonderful to be part of it here with you and so many other amazing people. So thank you, Katrina, you're for what you're doing, and thank you for doing this video. Yeah, you're welcome.